High Seas Trader is an old PC game that, for whatever reason, has always stuck in my head ever since I played it when I was really, really young. Now, I'm not really sure why, as this really isn't the kind of game that a kid would enjoy playing. It came out in 1995 for Miss DOS from Impressions Games. You may recognize their more famous game, uh, Lords of the Realm 2? Anyone? No? Ultimate Soccer Manager? I'm not even entirely sure how I came to get this game. I think one of my older brother's friends brought this game over to show it to us, and I ended up liking it so much, I asked to borrow it. And he said yes. And then I never gave it back. Yeah, that's right. For once, I was that kid. The game starts out by letting you know exactly how mid-90s it is by having badass 3D texts. This doesn't even look anything like the actual logo. They just wanted to show off. The year is 1650, and you play as the captain of a merchant boat. And of course, I get to name my ship. Being Portuguese, I started off in the probably great city of Lisbon. The whole goal of High Seas Trader is to be the most successful trading merchant you can be. And you do that by setting sail and trading goods to make a profit. But before you do that, you gotta prepare your ship. This includes going to the tavern and hiring yourself a crew. Look at these fine gents. I bet they can't wait to be cramped up on a wooden coffin sailing for months on end. Lucky me! I hired everyone that I could right away. I got some soldiers, plenty of apprentices, and maidens from Mortal Kombat. With a trusty crew and supplies on hand, we can take to the sea! Let me tell you, the very first thing I did when I played this game as a kid is that I looked at the maps and said to myself, Europe? Who gives a gosh dang about Europe? I want to be in America! Whee! And mutiny. So starting this game over as a rational thinking adult, still in Portugal, I can, for the very first time in my life, play this game properly. And thus, I'm finally free on the sea! But not too far from Europe or my crew will get pissed at me. Sailing around the world is honestly pretty legit. It kind of reminds me of classic Elder Scrolls games in terms of graphical style and open worldness. Follow the winds, open your sail, and make your way from port to port. Welcome to the excitement of High Seas Trader. Okay, this is boring. It's really cool at first as it gives a great sense of sailing a ship, and it can be weirdly soothing when sailing to ports that are nearby. But if you need to go anywhere far, Oh boy, maybe a little too realistic if you ask me. Thankfully, you can hire a helmsman. This allows you to set up waypoints and automatically travel along them. Depending on your luck, they also come with different skill levels. And it's worth your time and money to get someone who's good at your job. Otherwise, you'll end up with someone- Ah, shit! You sail us into rocks, you idiot! God damn it! Get us out of the rocks! Why aren't you getting mutinied? Like I said, the main goal of the game is to become as wealthy as possible, and you do that by trading goods at different ports. This means buying something cheap at one port, and selling it at another where it's worth a lot more. You need to do this while maintaining rations and wages for your men while staying profitable. As you make more money, you can buy different and bigger ships, allowing even larger crews and cargo. And I think it's this aspect that I remember liking this game so much. Games that have this kind of gameplay to them have always appealed to me. Working the market, getting what's valuable, and maximizing profit. There's something cathartic about this process that I find rather relaxing and strangely honest. So many other games are about killing things or fighting or whatever to get money that having a game that is about getting money without any sort of violence is refreshing even to this day. The market trading and high seas trader and general sailing gameplay holds up really, really well 20 years later. I consider it similar to other games like Harvest Moon or Aerobiz. Anyone? Aerobiz? I see Trader falls into that same category, and I really enjoy that style. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, I like capitalism. Early on in the game, I found that the best and fastest way to make a lot of money is guns. Go to a country that has a bunch of them for cheap, and then bring them to some tiny island colony with no proper way to fight off the very white man that sold them the guns in the first place. Instant profit. You could also try to make money by helping passengers get to places with a bit of extra cargo. But eh, who wants to help other people? Well, it turns out you kind of have to. Your ship and your crew is ranked by four different statistics. Daring, honor, loyalty, and nobility. 
As a kid, I can only figure out how to raise nobility, which is done by getting cash money. You can increase honor by ferrying passengers around, and loyalty can be gained by transporting passengers for free or by helping out other ships. You increase daring by being daring at sea. And the easiest thing to be daring against is pirates! Yes, quite frequently, pirates will attack you on your voyages. And young me loved this ship battles. They seem so authentic. You know, for 1995. You have several banks of cannons on both sides of your ship, which means you actually had to turn your ship to the side, look in that direction, and then fire! So real! So real that you can see that every ship ever accidentally had a single pixel floating at the top of its sprite that the developers forgot to fix. And lining up a shot and having it land feels like a victory with each shot. Because if you miss, it sounds just like a giant turd landing in the toilet. You can use different types of ammunition for different effects, and if you get close enough, the ships can board each other in a small arms fight. And it's here that... You don't do anything. Yeah, it's all automated. The most you can do is keep your crew healthy and happy, and then hope you have more dudes than them. This is a letdown after how much fun the cannon shooting is. And now, I'd like to tell you the story of the little pirate ship that could. One day, Captain Pro Jared was sailing in the East Indies when the little pirate ship that could saw his ship, which is three times the size of them, and thought, yeah, we can take them. The little pirate ship that could opened their cannon bays and began shooting at the Bagoom. The Bagoom turned to them and fired a single volley of cannonballs back and insta-wrecked their ship, to which the little pirate ship that could said, Fuck me, let's get out of here, as they turned to run. But as they sailed away, the men of the little pirate ship that could met in their locker room, gave a rousing motivational speech, and reversed their sails to once again attack the Bagoom, the little pirate ship that could, drew in close, and wouldn't you know it, they all died. And I took their stuff. The biggest problem with this game is that I pretty much already showed you everything there is to do. You can sail around and make money, and you can get into cannon fights with other ships, and that's about it. The end goal is arduous and really lame. Once you make enough money, you can return to your home city and purchase an estate, for no real purpose other than something to spend your money on. There are three sizes of the estate, but it's only worth buying the largest one right away since you need that to get the highest rank in the game. And that thing cost 742,000 gold. I was struggling to have about 40,000. So I went to Southeastern Asia and bought the most valuable thing there. Opium! I bought a crap ton of opium and sold it in the East Indies where it was worth three times as much. So for the next 11 in-game years, I sailed back and forth between these two places, making about 80,000 gold of opium each run and- Oh my god, I've become a drug lord. Nice. Alongside requiring high sailor stats in a state made of solid gold to rank up, you also need treasures which you can find completely randomly around the world. I bought them whenever I saw them, knowing that they would be useful at some point. So yeah, these are my treasures that I got. Yup, that's the Mona Lisa. To rank up, your honor, loyalty, and nobility have to be at a certain height, and your overall average has to be a certain amount. The thing is, when you rank up, it all resets to zero. You have to build them all back up again. This is what makes High Seas Trader fall apart in the end. Sure, you're making progress, but you have a constant feeling of being set back by these numbers getting sucked back down to zero, and building them up takes so long! I was going to try to beat this game, but I just couldn't do it. I got sick of traveling to places, and I didn't need money anymore with the best estate, so screw it! I'm done! I'm gonna set my own goals! Come on, men! We're going to go find Santa Claus! Woo! And mutiny. You guys are definitely on the naughty list. Going back to High Seas Trader, I still enjoy parts of it. Mostly the first parts, as it doesn't stay fun for very long. That's why my final rating for this game is a sparkler out of 10. High Seas Trader's gameplay holds up surprisingly well today. It starts out really, really fun, and like a sparkler, you have fun with it for a very, very brief time. At no point does the game evolve its mechanics or goals. Everything you're doing at the beginning of the game is exactly the same as at the end. Basically, the only way to continue having fun with it 
is if you set your own goals, and there's not a whole lot of options given the limitations of the game itself. I really like that this is a sailing game that actually discourages piracy and is all about honest trade, but maybe that's why there's so many pirates, because this got boring real fast. If it had a better end game, I would still recommend trying High Seas Trader today, but really it isn't worth it. You know when you first light up a sparkler it's cool to look at, but you don't really start having fun with it until you twirl it around? Well, that's basically what you need to do with this game. You need to find a way to twirl it around so that you get your own fun out of it. And you know what? That's exactly what I did. Hey Liverpool! Suck it! Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, hey, why not subscribe for more videos? Or if you want to watch another one right away, you can see the previous video I did on the Donkey Kong Country cartoon. Yeah, it had a cartoon show. Or if you want to see more old PC games, my friend Brutal Moose did a video on Mario Teaches Typing. Give that one a watch too.